Champion, Braveheart, Conqueror, Hero, Superman. Just some of the many words that Tim Sweeney would use to describe himself. And in a Fortnite, <laughs> Fortnite, where Tim Sweeney and the rest of Epic Games went head to head with Apple about essentially them apparently screwing over the little guy. So they claim that Apple is screwing over iOS developers and Epic are the heroes. They're the ones who are standing up for everyone. But in an utter display of hypocrisy, Epic have now announced that they've penned new deals for Crisis Remastered and Hitman 3 to now be exclusive, at least on a timed basis, to the Epic Store. So why is it hypocrisy? Well, that's because Epic is screwing over the real little guy in this scenario, and that is just the general consumer who wants to play his game on something that's not Chinese government-owned technology. So strap yourselves in because we're going to see this hypocrisy in action and we're going to talk a little bit about Hitman and Crisis as well and really see what's going on. Hi, Estelden here. So I had a bit of interest in Hitman 3. I'd been following it for a little while and that's because I've had some great experiences in their games in the past like Blood Money, the Hitman 2016 that had some decent moments. Absolution, a bit of a fucking shocker, but what can you do? But when I came to the website and I had a little bit of a look at what was going on, we've got, all right, Hitman 3. PlayStation logo, alright. Xbox logo, alright. Epic Games, uh, Where's everything else? You got fucking Stadia, for fuck's sake. Abomination of a platform, and there's nothing else. So we knew then and there it was going to be Epic Games exclusive, and now it has been confirmed. At this point, I just don't know what to say, because it's been proven now over time that while you might get yourselves some guaranteed quick earnings, you're going to shoot yourselves in the foot. And when this isn't your first ever game, where you just have no real fans, you might have people who have some interest, but not really guaranteed purchases or data like that to go off. When you're a company like IO, and I'm just going to assume here that they're behind the decision. I don't know if there's another publisher involved. When I say developer or publisher, I'm putting them all in the same boat. I just mean the decision makers here. So when a company like IO makes the decision to get into bed with Epic, it, it just confuses me because they've built so much goodwill over the years with fans and they rely on those fans. Square Enix pushed IO out the door saying the games weren't selling enough. IO were then going to be independent. So it was all about that goodwill. They were bringing the fans back, having that true experience, but I haven't really seen that. They've continued to go down the path of, like, these annoying seasons. And I don't really want that in my single-player game. I don't want fucking seasons or elusive targets and, like, time stuff where I feel like, all right, if I don't log in now, if I don't just, like, get on the hamster wheel of logging in on their schedule, essentially, then I might miss out on stuff. It's just not cool to me. I want to play the single-player games I enjoy when I want to and when I'm really feeling it. Now, the decision with Epic kind of just shows that for them, it, it is very much about the short term. And I hear the argument all the time from Epic fans where they say, oh, the developer's just trying to keep the lights on, you know, you can't hold that against them. But it feels like a bribe because this is a company that has the sales data of Hitman 2016, Hitman 2. So are they saying that they possibly just could not make a profit off this game if Epic weren't just throwing money at them? I really don't think so. They wouldn't have started development on this if there was no way it was going to work. Moving back to Epic, now that I've aired my grievances about Hitman, Tim Sweeney, he just strikes me as an absolute banana when it comes to any self-awareness about what he's doing in the gaming industry. I don't know whether he's just a liar, he's just corrupt, or if he genuinely believes that he's doing like the best thing for gamers. I'm really confused because everything he says on Twitter, all the statements, everything Epic does, there's just so many contradictions there. The latest we've learned about Epic vs. Apple is that Epic apparently like approached them with a deal about how, oh, we, we want like special treatment because we're Epic and we're bringing in the Fortnite dollars. You've got to give us like a special deal here, man. Like we need a bigger cut. But then Apple didn't go for it and then Epic went away. They produced their commercial, their advert. They planned a strategy, probably with Tencent as well, that was surrounding making Apple look like the bad guys and then just increasing Epic's status in the market, hopefully. If Apple then turned around and said, all right, we're going to cave in. You can do anything you want. Just come back to our store. But Apple aren't really having it, apparently. So this is probably going to continue for a little while. As I said in my last video on the subject, I don't think there's really going to be any winners here except for maybe Tencent because they're going to increase their presence in the American market by the fact that Apple and Amazon are going to start to look worse in consumers' eyes. So it's a tricky situation, but looking at the Epic Store situation specifically, I find it really just gross how they're still doing this after years and years, and I can't believe that they're still building a fan base. 
I actually had a bit of a look at what Epic fans are saying. And when the news came out that Hitman 3 is going to be timed exclusive to EGS, all it is is like real typical console war sort of garbage. People saying, oh, this is going to trigger people. Brace yourself. The onslaught PC gaming is weeping. So it's just all of that sort of console war stuff. And I thought we kind of grown out of this. Microsoft have moved on to it to some degree. They offer other value services now. Nintendo have got their handheld. But it seems like now it's just like PC that's the platform war and it's absolutely hopeless. So one of the reasons that a lot of us move to PC is to get out of that garbage. Because we know that publishers and the platform holders kind of use it against us in many, many ways. Epic just want to continue this. And I can tell you right now that all the people online, all the people who use the Epic Games Store, they need to understand that what Epic is doing is just not sustainable. Unless Tencent plan to just keep funding these exclusive deals over like the next decade or so, it's really not going to work. The only way it's going to happen is if all the Fortnite players, they start to grow up, they're using the Epic Games Store client, and then they start to look at other more mature games. They start to go, right, you know what the fuck am I playing Fortnite for? And then they start to use the, the Epic platform for games like, I don't know, whether it's the Hitman's or whether it's the Outer Worlds, those sort of titles. And then they just get ingrained into the platform. That's the only way it's going to work. I can admit that with Steam, it is probably one of the main reasons people love it is just the fact that they've got all of their games in one place. I know Steam's got a lot of great features. I personally don't really use a lot of them. A lot of people probably don't really use them. They just like having their game library there. But the thing is, when you've got the choice, and that's what PC gaming is really meant to be, it's meant to be about that choice. It's meant to be about having maybe even a DRM-free option with GOG. When that's taken away, it's just not going to build any goodwill. And the problem is, is while we might hate Epic, it's the developers who are going to lose here. It's going to be the companies like IO who are the losers, because people will just start to get sick of it. I can tell you that Hitman's the sort of game that I like, but it's not something that I'm like absolutely following the development every step of the way, and I must buy it day one. That's what Epic don't seem to understand. Most of the games that they pay exclusive deals for, they're not like absolute heavy hitters, where people have been waiting years for them to come out. They're the sort of games that people might buy if there's a good reception. They might show a bit of interest if it's on a sale on Steam or something, but they're not going to be like, oh my god, the game's on Epic, I must download the client, I must buy it. And it's those fans that you really need, because they're the ones who are going to keep the lights on over time. Do you really think Epic give a shit about you in like three years, four years time when they're releasing another game like Hitman 4? Epic will probably have moved on by then and they'll say, nah, you can fuck off. Your game didn't sell that well on our clients. No one really was interested, so we've moved on to other things. We don't want to do it again. And then what are IO supposed to do? Because they've already pissed off a lot of people. And it's certainly not just Hitman. You look at something like Phoenix Point. A lot of goodwill going on with the Kickstarter. A lot of people really excited. They announce a move to Epic. And then suddenly a lot of people start to find the flaws in these games. They might give a lot of things the benefit of the doubt. Because they go, yeah, you know, you're a bit of a mid-sized publisher. This is like your first title in a while, perhaps. So we're going to ignore some of the rough edges and the, the jank that goes on. But as soon as you make a move that's entirely anti-consumer, you're moving over to another platform, Chinese government's involved to some degree, it's pretty gross, and we don't want to go along with it, but you're saying we need to if we're going to enjoy your game. Some developers, like the Metro developer even said, oh, if it doesn't sell on there, we might not make PC games anymore. When you're saying things like that, you're just going to kill all of that optimism people are then going to get a magnifying glass and really scrutinize your game and look for any potential problems and go, right, that's an excuse and that's a reason not to buy it. I'm going to give it a miss. I can tell you there's a lot of people who are on the fence. I am one of them. There's plenty of others who, after this news, pretty much went, right, Hitman 3, it's no longer a 2021 game. See you in 2022. And when you just completely burn all of that goodwill, it's not going to come back. People aren't going to be rushing to Steam in 2022 to buy it. They're going to say, this is an old game. Do I really want to pay for it at full price? I absolutely do not want to do that at all. I'm going to move on to something else. There's something else that's cool coming out in 2022. If I look at the two, 89 bucks for Hitman, at least in my country, 89 bucks for the next, whatever it might be, people are going to look at that. That's where the hype is. That's where the excitement is. I think for Epic in this instance, if they're going to stop looking like hypocrites, they need to just find other ways to provide value. It's the same thing I say about Sony. They're no longer really providing points of value for the PC audience because the only thing that they want you to buy a PlayStation for is the exclusives. There's nothing with the actual console itself. So I'm talking about the technology here. 
So the actual box that you pick up at the store, that thing. There's no real value for that if you're primarily a PC gamer. You might love the exclusives, there might be some incredible ones. I personally love Bloodborne, but getting the box out and setting it up and doing all of that, it's a pain in the ass. I just wish I could play it on PC. Microsoft have seen that, so they're offering other points of value, like Game Pass. Nintendo did the same thing. Now we've got the Nintendo Switch, it's a really cool handheld that complements the PC gaming experience, so I'm not so bothered. But Epic just are refusing to do that. They've been doing the same strategy for ages, and they seem to have accepted that they're not going to win any goodwill in the mainstream from the PC audience. That's why they've now moved on to trying to brainwash the Fortnite fans into hating Apple, hating Amazon, and loving them and seeing them as the good guy. They're not interested anymore in intelligent fans who've got the maturity to understand what's going on. They don't like those people, because they can do a bit of critical thinking and say, Hey Tim, you're a fucking hypocrite. You don't know what you're talking about in this space. You're just coming up with random ramblings to suit your agenda, when all the decisions you're making really are just to increase your profits in the long term. You don't care about the consumer having a good experience. You just want them to come there because they feel like they have to or they're going to miss out on something. You don't care about the developers either, who you claim you're helping with the 12% cut or whatever it is, because you know well and truly that that's going to be going away. If Epic Games, let's say in two years, three years time, if somehow Epic is bigger than Steam, you'll see a few things changing. It's not going to be happening forever, it's just got no sustainability, because, I mean, Steam are making a lot of money, I'm sure, and I'm sure there's things that could be they could be doing a lot better, but it's certainly not a matter of they're just absolutely raking in billions and trillions of dollars for no reason. They actually do provide a little bit of value. There's some cool things with Steam that Epic still don't really offer. So for me, the way they can create some value is actually get to work on making some real exclusives. You cancelled the Unreal Tournament game that you were going to be making to keep going with Fortnite. How about you get back to doing that? They need to put a lot of work into the storefront so people actually go, alright, I've got an option between Steam, GOG, and Epic. Maybe there's something that Epic have got that is of actual value. And I'm not talking about like adding achievement points like they did quite recently. The thing with achievement points, and I say this from experience in playing MMOs like WoW, where I've been sucked in as well, achievement points only exist to make you feel like you are going to lose something by leaving the game or leaving the platform. It's the same with Sony and Microsoft with their trophy systems and achievement points. They exist to kind of feed you into the ecosystem, so you never want to leave. I know plenty of people who, when the new consoles were coming out, went, oh, I don't know if I want to get a PS4 because I'll lose my achievement points. And at the end of the day, who gives a shit? They don't really do anything. And you're really going to go bragging online about how big my internet penis is over a few achievement points? No one gives a shit. And the good thing about PC and the fact that you can hack and get those points is it ensures it removes all of that element to them. And most achievement points in games are very, very lazy. So that's something that Epic's now added to their store. That's not really creating value. It's just more stuff to try and suck people into the ecosystem. I know some people might like them for like innocent reasons, and that's completely fine. They're a nice bonus for plenty of people, but they're not really a feature, I would say, that actually improve gaming. Most of the time, they're actually quite lazy. But ignoring Hitman for a second, because something else happened that is even more pathetic, and that is the Crisis Remaster. Can you imagine actually making a re-fucking master an exclusive to a platform? I can't think of anything sadder. I mean, I played Crisis for the first time, like, two or three years ago, and it was an alright game. I played it after the visual spectacular wasn't really a thing anymore, it was just like a standard game at this point. And it looked pretty cool, it had some nice locations, some alright shooting mechanics, it sort of brought back like an old school Far Cry experience for me in a way. But it wasn't anything particularly exciting that I'm ever really going to revisit. And apparently they think I'm going to because they've got this remaster out on PC as well. And I mean, what am I really going to get out of it? It's just going to be the same campaign. There might be a few nicer textures and things. But do you really think I'm going to like be sucked into the Epic Store over a remaster? It just doesn't make any sense. I'm really surprised they invested in this. I think for a lot of people, a remaster or re-release, it just kind of breaks the illusion of how great that game actually was. I saw a lot of people with Skyrim who were like religiously going, oh yes, I'm going to buy that re-release when it comes out on the new consoles. And I could, I would bet money that not many of those people actually beat the game again because they played it through and thought, right, it was a bit magical for me the first time, but like doing these same quests, exploring all of these old same dungeons, it's not really as great as it was the first time around. I don't really want to do this again. 
So to think that people are actually going to break whatever their, their alignment is with GOG or Steam and finally download this client and finally buy something and spend money with Epic, it is not going to happen with a remaster. I'd be really surprised if this was the turning point for many people. But my main worry and the losers in this scenario now for me are the smaller, like mid-sized developers. You think of games like Elix, Greedfall, even Hitman to an extent, even like the Securos to an extent, where they're not AAA, I would say. Maybe they've got some production value. Some are bigger than others. Like, I mean, Securos obviously bigger than Elix, but you know what I mean? They're not like the big juggernauts like the Call of Duties or the Marvel Avengers sort of games. I'm really worried that with so many of the middle range publishers, and by them I mean like Private Division, who published The Outer Worlds, I mean the Deep Silvers and the THQ Nordics, I worry that they're just going to keep following the epic gravy train and they're going to keep doing that and they're just going to end up ruining those sort of games for everyone. Because it's going to kill more and more franchises. I'm not saying that Hitman's going to die because of this decision, but they are going to lose fans and that does have like an add-on effect in the future. Because Hitman 4 is going to be announced at some point and we haven't really seen the effect of like what happens to the sequel on PC to a series that was with Epic for a while, like the next Metro game if that happens. We won't really know until that game comes out or that's announced and we can see the feedback surrounding it. I can say for myself, if there is a Metro 4, my enthusiasm was kind of killed, whereas I was kind of excited for Metro Exodus. So I just hope that more publishers see the mistakes that come out of this. They see the goodwill that it burns and they just say, right, let's just release it on everything. I don't care about games going to Epic, just don't make them exclusive. Microsoft do it all the time. New Super Lucky's Tale, it went out on Epic. Battletoads, that might go out on Epic as well, I'm not sure. But what they do is they make sure that you've got the choice and you can play it wherever you want. So to the publishers, I pretty much just say, release it everywhere. Stop trying to chase the quick money when you're going to burn fans in the long run. And when your studio's closing and you're saying no one's buying our games, we're going to turn around and say, look, we were willing to do it, but you really just shot us in the back. You stabbed us in the back. So we moved on to something else, and that's really all there is to it. Give us the choice. PC is meant to be an open platform. Stop letting Epic win by taking their bribe money. Because I can tell you right now, as soon as the publishers and everything, they stop accepting the money and they say, nah, we need to release this to everyone. We want to get this out to fans. We're trying to build an audience here. That's when Epic will have to turn around and they'll either have to shut down their store or they might actually have to do something that benefits the consumer. Better store practices, maybe even saying, yeah, 10 cent, back off a bit, we're going to change things, we're going to operate things uh, more internally now, you can fuck off. That'd be absolutely fantastic. Is it going to happen? Probably not anytime soon, but we're going to see in the next year or so the effects of a lot of these exclusives and what they have on their sequels. Tim Sweeney, stop being a fucking hypocrite and maybe people will take you seriously again. So thanks very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks again and bye bye